Today, we're diving into something fundamental but incredibly useful in statistics, measures of central tendency for ungrouped data. By the end of this lesson, you'll not only know what the mean, median, and mode are, but you'll also understand how to calculate and interpret them in real-world situations. Let's kick things off by defining each of these terms. The mean, also known as the arithmetic mean, is what most people refer to as the average. It's the value you get when you add up all the numbers in your data set and divide that sum by the number of data points. It's simple, right? But it's also incredibly powerful because it gives us a sense of the center of our data, even if the data itself is spread out or clustered in different ways. Now, let's talk about the median. The median is the middle value in a data set when the numbers are arranged in ascending or descending order. What's cool about the median is that it isn't affected by extreme values, unlike the mean. So, in cases where you have an outlier, the median might actually give you a better idea of the central tendency of your data. Then we have the mode, which is the value that appears most frequently in a data set. It's great for categorical data or when you want to know what's most common in a set of numbers. And here's a fun fact. Your data set can have more than one mode or even none at all. Now that we've got the definitions down, let's roll up our sleeves and see how to calculate these measures. For the mean, we'll use the formula that most of you are already familiar with. X bar or mean is equal to summation of X all over N. This just means we sum up all our data points and divide by the number of data points. For example, if a student received grades of 85, 90, 88, 92, and 87, we can calculate the mean by adding those numbers together, which gives us 442, and then dividing by 5. So, the mean grade is 88.4. Pretty straightforward, right? All right, let's walk through another example together. This time, we're going to calculate the mean daily sales of a bookstore over five days. The sales numbers for each day are $150, $175, $160, $180, and $170. To find the mean, we're going to follow the same simple steps as before. First, we sum up all the daily sales. 150 plus 175 plus 160 plus 180 plus 170 is equal to 835. Next, we divide the total by the number of days, which is 5 in this case. So, mean equals 835 divided by 5 is equal to 167. So, the mean daily sales for the bookstore over these 5 days is $167. This tells us that, on average, the bookstore is making $167 per day. Of course, some days might be higher and others lower, but the mean gives us a nice, quick snapshot of the overall sales performance. Next up is the median. To find it, the first thing we do is arrange the numbers in order. If we have an odd number of data points, the median is just the middle value. But if we have an even number of data points, we take the average of the two middle values. Let's take an example to make this clear. If we have the ages 21, 19, 25, 22, and 20, we first rearrange them. 19, 20, 21, 22, 25. The median is 21 since it's the middle value. Notice how the median gives us a sense of the middle without being thrown off by any extreme values. In data with outliers, the median can sometimes give us a better sense of central tendency than the mean. Now, let's work through another example, this time calculating the median. We're given the house prices in thousands for six homes in a neighborhood, 120, 135, 150, 145, 130, and 125. The first step in finding the median is to arrange these numbers in either ascending or descending order. Since we have an even number of data points, six in total, the median is going to be the average of the two middle values. In our sorted list, the two middle values are $130 and $135. To find the median, we simply take the average of these two numbers. Median equals 130 plus 135 all over 2, which is equal to 132.5. So, the median house price in this neighborhood is 132500 The median gives us a better sense of the middle house price, especially when we have extreme values or outliers, because it's not influenced by the highest or lowest prices. Finally, let's talk about the mode. To find the mode, 
we simply look for the value that appears most frequently in the dataset. For example, if a cafe sells 50, 52, 55, 50, 48, 50, and 53 cups of coffee over seven days, the mode is 50 because that's the number that occurs most often. Simple, right? The mode can be super useful, especially when you want to identify the most common value in your dataset. All right, now let's dive into a more detailed example where we're going to calculate all three measures of central tendency, mean, median, and mode, using the final grades of 30 students in general mathematics. These grades are 87, 92, 98, 76, 81, 89, 99, 84, 77, 95, 83, 90, 78, 96, 79, 88, 94, 85, 97, 86, 91, 82, 93, 80, 75, 100, 79, 88, 97, and 76. First, we'll arrange the grades in ascending order and then calculate the mean, median, and mode. To find the mean, we'll start by summing all the grades. Let's add them up. You may pause this video to calculate the sum. All right, the sum all the grades is 2560. Now, we'll divide this total by the number of students, which is 30. Mean equals 2560 divided by 30 gives us 85.33. So, the mean or average grade for these students is 85.33. Next, we'll calculate the median, which is the middle value when the data. Since we have an even number of grades, 30 in total, the median will be the average of the 15th and 16th numbers in this ordered list. The 15th grade is 87 and the 16th grade is 88. So the median is median equals 87 plus 88 all over 2 give us 87.5. Therefore, the median grade is 87.5. Finally, let's find the mode, which is the grade that appears most frequently. Looking at our sorted list again, we see that the grade 79 88 and 97 each appear twice, while all the other grades appear only once. So, this dataset has three modes, 79, 88, and 97, making it a multimodal dataset. In this example, we've calculated the mean, median, and mode for the final grades of 30 students in general mathematics. The mean is 85.33, the median is 87.5, and the mode is 79, 88, and 97. Each of these measures gives us different insights into the distribution of grades. The mean tells us that, on average, students scored about 85.33. The median shows that the middle score is slightly higher, at 87.5, while the mode reveals that 79, 88, and 97 were the most common scores in the class. And that's how you calculate the mean, median, and mode. Each of these measures gives us a different perspective on the center of our data, and depending on the situation, one might be more useful than the others. For instance, the mean gives us the overall average, the median shows us the midpoint, and the mode tells us what's most common. By understanding these concepts, you'll be able to not only analyze data more effectively, but also apply this knowledge in real-world scenarios, whether it's interpreting grades, sales figures, or survey results. Statistics is everywhere, and these measures of central tendency are your toolkit for making sense of it all. This concludes our lesson on measures of central tendency. Next time, we'll dive into more advanced topics, but for now, make sure to practice calculating these with different datasets. The more comfortable you get with these basics, the easier the more complex concepts will be. Thank you for watching this video on Math and Phil Tech TV. We hope you found it informative and engaging. If you enjoyed the content, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. Hit the notification bell so you never miss an update and share this video with your friends and fellow learners. Your support helps us continue to create great content. See you in the next video.